This is the Soul One Month Overview Reading for the month of July 2023. It's currently May 23rd, 2023, 12, 16 a.m. Eastern Time. Soul at the time of this reading, currently $20.02, that's USD. And the shuffle file for the uh, Solana July reading was created on May 7th, 2023 at 1029 p.m. Eastern Time. That's this video right here. So the overall theme and behavior for the month, we have a failed attempt to break through key resistance followed by a decline through key support. It's crossed with a lot of price change. Um, the Prince of Swords always speaks of a lot of price change, it's, um, sometimes to the upside, sometimes to the downside. It looks like in this case, it's, it's more so to the downside. Um, Behavior around the highest high, we have uh, bumping along resistance, maybe breaking through resistance and then bumping along resistance some more. The majority of the behavior around the highest high will be bumping along resistance. And then behavior around the lowest low, there'll be a significant low. That's on this, like a like a year to date kind of scale. There'll be a significant trough that'll stand out at least on like a, a one month chart, but probably on a year to date kind of scale. Um, Let's take a look at 2023's reading and see how we did so far. So aside from like this lowest low first thing in, in the beginning of the year, we have a lowest low here in March. Looks like there's a lowest low here in March. And then what may be a high, like often the Ace of Swords is a highest high. Not always, but often. And you could see here in April, we have what could be a highest high. Um, that Ace of Swords, sometimes it's a midway pl place and we see like a you know, a higher price level after it, but often it's a highest high. Um, this is looking pretty solid. We go into pretty decline mode in May. And it looks like that's what we're kind of entering in here in May. So I'd say that's pretty solid. Um, on the first, we have a period of volatility that ends with, a, excuse me, that has a sharp drop within that period of volatility, standing out on a one month scale. On the second, we uh, attempt to establish support uh, at a key support level on a, on a multi-day chart. There's an important resistance level that's highlighted as well on a multi-day scale. Um, but it looks like it's pretty mixed on the second. On the third, however, at the beginning of the day, we have what appears to be um, a note. We have a, a, a rally starting at the beginning of the day. And it looks like a lot of price change um, on the third. A lot of price change early on. Matter of fact, it's not a rally. It's a decline early in the day. I'm sorry, guys. It's a decline early in the day and a lot of price change um, followed by a move to the upside um, to what may be a highest high there on the fourth. More likely it's on the fifth, but it, it's possible there on the cusp of the third, fourth. Um, the fourth, we have a period of volatility that ends with a fast sudden move higher. That fast sudden move higher takes us into the fifth where we meet a key resistance and a highest high. That resistance level we break down from there with consecutively lower spikes up on the way down. A lot of price, a lot of ground is covered price change wise uh, to the downside there. And then um, on the sixth, out of the decline, we have a, from the bottom of range a big move all the way to the top of a range, taking us to the seventh where we break through resistance. We stay above it briefly and then we break back down through the same price level shortly thereafter. Um, usually there's like a new local high there. Um, not a highest high, but after that sharp decline on the fifth, sixth, we probably see a new local high there of some sort. Um, and then we have a fast sudden move higher on the eighth after what appears to be. On the cusp of the seventh, eighth, we have a rally with a fast sudden move higher. I'm advised not to chase that rally on the ninth. We have a trade opportunity and a decline down to and through a support level to meet a second support level. That's on a multi-day scale. And then we rotate sideways along that support. Um, that trade opportunity I'll talk about in more detail. I also left out there's a trade opportunity here on the third, fourth. Um, if you're interested in, in uh, the, the paid version, guys, where we talk about the best trades that we see for the month, uh, it's a really great way to support the channel. You go here to our, our services, SO Meta Posts. Computer's really slow today. Um, click on monthly subscription. And then you click on whatever subscription you're interested in, or if you want all of the paid versions, it's the 250. Um, and this is really the best way to support the channel, that and the, the uh, rule of karma, my friends. So thanks to all, the, all those of you that go ahead and do that. Also, if you're looking to open up a brokerage account, you can open up a free Webull account, which is way better than Robinhood, if you ask me. 
Um, if you open up through, through the link in the, we'll pin it in the comments, um, you'll get uh, up to 24 free shares as well as I will. Um, I would I would recommend Weeble even if they didn't give away free sh shares. All right, guys. So uh, back to the reading. Um, so there's sideways rotation there into the 10th where we have um, erratic behavior back and forth through the same price level. Um, it looks like probably a failed attempt to break through key resistance, but there's also a prominent trough there on the 10th um, on a one month kind of scale. On the 11th, uh, I'm advised to be cautious there multiple false bottoms um so probably a gap up and then we decline with multiple false bottoms there on the 11th on the 12th we have three crisscrosses back and forth through the same price level confirming a bullish trend um with the third cross moving to the upside um that's a price level that's important on a multi-day scale on the 13th however it looks like we have a trough oversold uh territory um on the 13th and we have a big move out of that to the upside standing out on a multi-day uh followed by a rally along a diagonal trend line on the 14th that ends with a fast sudden move higher and then a breakdown through that diagonal trend line with increasing volatility on the way down rally towards the early part of the afternoon uh, rally commences and takes us into an overbought crest on the 15th that we sell off from down to uh, through multiple support levels there's a trade opportunity there as well i'll talk about in more uh detail on the paid version on the 16th we have an unexpected move higher um and what what appears to be a day trade opportunity i'll talk about those trades again in the paid version in more detail on the 17th sideways rotation increasing with uh, volatility and price swinging as we move forward in time and then it goes into a kind of like a bullish mode but it's a fake out on the 18th we have a fake out shake out um, a lot of erratic behavior there on the on the 18th but a fake out um, something in, uh, de designed to create impulsive decisions by the retail investors on the 19th an important resistance level that we meet that is a good mean point if you were to open up a short and a long position if you can do that with soul I'm not sure probably um, so on the 19th, a lot of price change also off of that resistance level, uh, taking us. There's a day trade opportunity there on the 19th as well as a swing trade opportunity. And then it looks like towards the end of the day or on the cusp of the 19th, 20th, we have a big move to the upside. So we decline, matter of fact, we decline on the 19th from that resistance pretty notably into what may be a lowest low there on the 28th. And then out of that lowest low, there's a big move higher, pushing um, the upper end of a range higher, taking us to a brief peak on the 21st. That's easily missed, followed by another decline through multiple support levels on a multi-day kind of scale. That's uh, a trade opportunity as well. We'll talk about in the paid version. And then on the 22nd, a rally increasing with momentum moving forward into the 23rd where we have the completion of that rally looks like at the end of the day um, followed by a sharp decline on the 24th um, that increases with momentum moving forward into a lowest low that's the second place where we have a highest probability of lowest low the 20th and the 24th on the 25th we have a notable reversal that'll stand out on a multi-day on the 26th an important range on a, on a one month kind of scale is highlighted and we have a big move to uh, what appears to be the day's high towards the middle of the day of the 22nd, uh, 26th. Um, upper end of a range. And then we decline into the 27th off of a prominent peak. We decline pretty notably on the 27th um, into a prominent trough there. We may have a lowest low there on the 27th, 28th as well. That's another location of a possible lowest low. Um, on the 28th in the period of sideways in a sideways fluctuating decline, there's an opportunity to open up a position. We'll talk about that in the paid version. And then on the 29th, looks like we start off in a trough early in the day. Um, there's a day trade opportunity in there. And there's also an important technical price level highlighted on the 29th, usually as resistance, not always, but it looks like probably as resistance here on the 29th, the important technical price level on a scale of at least a one year. On the 30th, it looks like that resistance is uh, is still highlighted, continuing to the 30th. We might have kind of like a flattened out day there. And then on the 31st, um, an important trade opportunity there as well. Uh, the Magus card, usually there's a lot of price change around the Magus card, but it's, it's one of those cards that can be in either direction. And it looks like it's pretty mixed. Um, it looks like it's pretty mixed on the 31st. The sneak preview for August is uh, we meet a resistance level 
that we've met many times before and failed to break through, it's highlighted, and there's a sharp decline off of that resistance level. That's sold for July 2023. Let me know what you think by hitting that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Most importantly, my friends, make sure to follow that rule of karma. Most important part of the channel. You do that here on our resources tab of the website, Tarot for Traders. Rule of karma is we ask that you, you donate 5% of the profits from the information you make on the, you get on this channel. We want you to donate 5% of the profits forward to one of these charities. 5% of the profits back to the channel. That leaves you with 90% of the profits. It's the right thing to do. Make sure you spend that out of love. And the universe is going to send it back to you tenfold through this channel, my friends. I'll see you on the next one.